how you doing? I look like this now, temporarily. Yeah, so we have four prompts and I could technically fulfill all four prompts with just one book. But I mean, what's the fun of that? We're here to challenge ourselves, aren't we? The four prompts are a book with flowers on the cover, a book with your fave colour on the cover, a book from your TBR you're really excited about, and a buddy read. Yeah. So, let's go to my, oh my god, this is not a great angle. Let's go to my unread books shelf. Is that what we're calling it? Okay, so, we got some books. As you can see, it's all of these books and my phone is ringing so I'm going to have to stop for a little bit and I'll be right back. And we are back with a slightly different look because that phone call took, took a long time. So, four books for the four prompts. So, we have book with flowers and cover, fave colour, TBR, excited TBR, blah 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 something something, mumble mumble, anybody read? So, this is very close. Much better. So, let's go see what we have. So, we have a lot. Gonna have to move this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, a bit more space here. So let's start with the buddy reads I'm having. So we have. Which books are? I? Am I going to buddy read? Oh dear. Okay, so I know I'm buddy reading that one. And I know I'm buddy reading this one. So that's that's maybe one book. And flowers, fave colour and most excited about. So um I mean I am excited about most books on my TBR, so basically any book would do. As far as my fave colour, I have a few fave colours, not just the one. But I mean, I do like purple. So there's a contender. Wow, great with words. Oh look, Star Wars. Uh, this one, this one is both fave colour and with a flower on it. So I mean, <laughs> but we're trying for. Don't think this has any. No, it's just purple. So, well, we are trying for different books. Oh, this is gonna take a while. Okay, so I am quite excited about reading this one, Good Girl's Guide to Murder. It does not have any flowers. I'm not sure I'm particularly fond of white and red. Well, it's fine, but I wouldn't call them favourite colours, would I? Um, I mean, I could go for blue because I quite like blue, but I don't think this is a book I want to be reading right now. So maybe not. What more do we have? Oh, Alan McNamara's. Ooh, we have flowers on that one. We can read that one. Basically, all page tune books have flowers on them. Oh, that was a hard one. 
da, 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 chasing Daisy. That's, that's basically all of them. Okay, so could go for that one. So what do we have? Okay, I'm thinking Buddy Reed. So Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston for the Buddy Reed. Yeah. Where do we put you? By all the junk. Yes. <laughs> Excuse my messy place. Okay, so that's one of three. Jesus. Um. Yeah, okay. We'll go for this one for the flower one. So, Kate and Clara's Curious Cornish Craft Shop by Ali McNamara. Mouthful. We'll place you over here. Um. Okay, so favorite color and most excited for. <coughs> so many bucks. Mm. Okay, we'll go most excited for. So, a Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Seems like a good pick. So, favorite color, favorite color, favorite color. You know what? Let's let's read this one. The Color Purple by Alice Walker. Babe color. Bonus for having flowers on it as well, but you know. And that's it. Let's just put these back, shall we? Meow 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 meow. So four books for the readathon. Very pink in this light. Yeah, this is a great angle. And perfect lighting. Oh dear. So, you may have made... <laughs> You may or may not have seen uh, some clips from our live that we did today and if I haven't been able to edit that in, I'm sorry. Um, if I have, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so it was a whole lot of fun that live. Uh, it was also super embarrassing at times, but hey-ho, we are... Do we really care anymore? Don't think so. Uh, I am just about to go to bed, but I will be reading a bit more of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder, which uh, I did start during the live, so... Not... A whole lot into it yet. Oops. Uh, I'm not a whole lot into it yet, but I'm I'm actually quite enjoying it so far. So yeah, we shall. Uh, I'm only about this far in, so I got quite a bit more to go. I did. I didn't do a whole lot of actually reading during the end of that live but oh well <laughs> I still have a week to go I mean <laughs> I'm not off to the greatest start but yeah who cares it's just a bit of fun it's not the end of the world if I fail or is it also, I may have broken my tripod because uh, it keeps wanting to go all wonky. So that's great. I mean, spend some money on new tripods. I may have just fixed it. I might have just fixed it. Wow. Okay.
So, I just finished A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. And, um, oh my god. You need to read this book. This book. Uh... <laughs> Where do I even start? So this book is about Pip and Pip is doing a school project in where she's basically she she's like a Veronica Mars. Uh, she's her title's Veronica Mars. And if you don't know who Veronica Mars is, Google it and go watch that show and later on that movie. So basically Pip uh, decides to do this project. It's it's a school project, it just happens to be about a murder case. So basically five years ago Andy Bell got killed by her boyfriend Sal Singh. This is what everybody knows and that's just the truth to everybody. Or is it? But here's the thing, Andy's body was never found and Sal Singh committed suicide. Or did he? This is what we're going to find out in the book, um, or that I've already found out. <laughs> Basically, I'm doing such a poor explanation of it because I'm just, I'm in awe of this book. It's it's that mystery book you want where it's it's an easy read. You you're just captivated from the start and you just you basically just flip the pages and go right into it and by the end of it <laughs> you finish the book earlier than you thought you would. I mean it's it's a 430-ish page book. It's a it's a decent sized book, but it's written it's written in this way that it just flows, and I guess that's what keeps you reading, uh, and also the fact that it's a mystery. <laughs> So there's this mystery going on which Pip is trying to solve uh, as well as getting threats for her life and her family and her friends safety. Everyone's in danger from this investigation that Pip is doing but still she she marches on. She She's not given up this quest to find out the truth and boy does she find out the truth. So from the last few YA mystery murder books that that I've read, uh, I've sort of guessed from the start, or very early on at least, who was the killer and basically everything you're not supposed to find out until the end. This is how much of the book is left when you start to figure out what has actually happened. That's basically the end of the book. It's like 50 pages left and that is a great part of the book to, to, to start summarizing everything that's happened and in this case finding out the truth behind the mystery. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely did not do this book any justice in explaining what it's about and why you should read it but trust me just trust me here you want to pick up this book I think if you're just getting into mysteries or you just want to see if mysteries is uh, mystery detective stories basically if if you want to see if that's something for you pick up this book yeah pick it up
Okay. So. I'm about halfway through this book. And I just felt like I needed to jump in and say this. These two characters. Alex and Henry. They are having so much sex everywhere <laughs> that in the pace this is going, something is bound to blow up. It's just... <laughs> this relationship of theirs is a secret from more or less everybody. I guess some people have suspicions but they're not really talking about it. So at this point basically Henry and Alex are going around wherever they can and uh, bonking. There's so much bonking going on. And I don't know why I'm acting like this. Do you know, Oliver? No. He doesn't seem to care either. Well, there you go. Okay. So, I just finished Red, White and Royal Blue. <laughs> and... where to begin i feel like i'm gonna do this with every book i finish it's like where to begin so in short this book is about alex who is the first son of the first female president of the united states and also henry who is a uh, prince of england in the beginning of this book uh, Alex and Henry are rivals. Uh, they are <laughs> they are equivalent, but they are rivals uh, for what I'm not really sure. But they hate each other. Let's leave it at that. So we begin at a wedding at Prince Philip's wedding, and. At the start, I thought Prince Philip was Henry's cousin, but then in the middle of it, I think he's, it's his brother. I'm actually not sure if Philip is Henry's cousin or if he's Henry's older brother. I don't know. I mean, I could go back and check, but I don't wanna. So... I'm not sure if that part was, wasn't very clear or if I just wasn't paying attention, but they're related in, in some way. So anyway, it's this Prince Philip's wedding. He's a bystander character, we don't really care about him. But at this wedding, um, Alex and Henry have a little chat. I mean, Alex walks up to Henry quite drunk and by the end of it, Alex has fallen on the wedding cake. And so this is just massive news to the world because the world has no other news to speak of. We need to know about this cake that apparently costs quite a lot of money. It was a ridiculously priced cake and Alex fell on it. Yeah. So... After that little incident, uh, the the people of Alex and Henry set up to make Alex and Henry have like these public appearances and make it so the world thinks they are actually buddy buddies. But um, turns out feelings get uh, involved. So yes, this is a enemies to lovers story. I mean that's a lot of things that feels a bit inconsistent but at the same time I didn't really care about it because I 
think <laughs> I feel like most of the book was basically Henry and Alex going around bonking and then kind of realizing they actually had feelings for each other. Uh, these texts and emails they sent to each other uh, are ridiculous but hilarious. I found this book quite funny and entertaining but then again I am very easily amused. Uh, I would definitely not rate it as high as A Good Girl's Guide to Murder uh, but they are very different kinds of books so if I were to like give a star rating I'd say A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is a 5 star and this would be about a 3.5 which is a very good rating in my opinion if you want the star rating, uh, there it is. All right, so on to the next book. I should not be this close to the, to the camera, no. Okay, so I finished Kate and Clara's Cornish, Curish Cornish Craft Shop, I still can't say it. So I finished this book just now and um, there was a little uh, teary moment uh, by the end. It was so sweet. Um, I mean, I know I'm overly emotional, <laughs> but that was really cute. That was such a cute ending. Okay. Yeah. Why am I doing this? Okay, so it's a bit later. Uh, I've been editing this vlog a bit <laughs> but I also needed to calm down a bit let's see it like that shall we so Kate and Clara's Curious Cornish Craft Shop first off apart from her Notting Hill with Love Actually book series which I guess has some in it too but not as much as her other books uh, all her books have this magical realism uh, which, which I really enjoy I like that in a book especially a rom-com like this I like that little bit of magical realism to, to I guess make it more cuter I'm not sure how to explain it it's just that little tiny bit of tiny bit of something that that I really like in a rom-com book I guess that's why I like Alexandra Potter's book so much as well because her books have that magical realism to her rom com -ness. So if I remember correctly, this is the third book that takes place in the Cornish harbour town of St. Felix. But they're all standalones, but we do meet the previous uh, main characters uh, in the following books. But they're all standalones and they don't have the same uh, they don't have the same plot line well they do but the plot line is basically girl meets boy girl and boy falls in love happy ending <laughs> that is kind of a summarization of the book but there's more to it 
In this we follow Kate and Kate owns the local craft shop and very early on she is given a very old sewing machine that Noah who runs the antique shop uh, has gotten along with some other craft materials and other things uh, from a job lot and Noah tells her that uh, a new man has moved into town called Jack and Jack is or has just opened uh, a craft shop or art shop really um, which uh, doesn't sit quite well with Kate as you can imagine because she does sell art supplies as well in her craft shop Kate and Jack meet and uh, not off to the best start so quite soon after having acquired this old sewing machine uh, Kate notices that someone has left little um, embroidery pieces <laughs> and she can't figure out who's done them and as so happens uh, Jack has also been receiving some some things that he can't quite figure out so one of the many things he bought from Noah from the job lot was an easel so while Kate keeps getting these little embroidery pieces Jack keeps getting canvases of paintings not long after they've figured out they're both getting these uh, mystery items let's call them uh, they figure out that they can be put together and basically be shown a little movie of the past. <laughs> so as we go along in this and we watch Kate and Jack fall in love, we are also following along on this mystery of something that happened, I want to say like 50 years ago or something. So there are things about this story that are quite unbelievable especially uh, the gifts at the end because uh, no one is that generous and that's the only spoilerish kind of thing I'm gonna give you but it's a really cute book and I do uh, <coughs> it's a really cute book and I do think that if you are into these rom-com magical realism kind of books and you haven't already read Ali McNamara's books pick this one up pick up her other books as well my favorite book of hers is called Step Back in Time uh, it's bas basically a time traveling book but that's a story for another time so as far as star ratings go, I think I would put it at about a 3.5 kind of a level because it's a good book and I do think you should pick it up if these kind of books are your thing but at the same time it's the kind of book that it wouldn't have been the end of the world if I hadn't had finished it or anything like that it kept me reading and all that don't get me wrong uh, and I do like these kinds of books once in a while uh, that's that's why I do pick them up every now and again
purple. So I'm going to read the, the blurb on the back because I don't think I can summarize it, the story of it, in my own words. Um, set in the deep American South between the wars, The Color Purple is a tale of Seeley, a young black girl born into poverty and segregation. Raped repeatedly by the man she calls father, she has two children taken away from her, is separated from her beloved sister Nettie and is trapped into an ugly marriage. But then she meets the glamorous Shug Avery, singer and magic maker, a woman who has taken charge of her own destiny. Gradually, Celia discovers the power and joy of her own spirit, freeing herself from her past and reuniting her with those she loves. So, I feel like this is a book that is very hard to explain. Because it feels like <laughs> it's one of those things where the story in the book is one of those which I feel is not really going anywhere. It's not, I'm going to say doing anything, but that's not really what I mean. The story isn't really coming from anywhere and isn't really going anywhere. It's just like a part of someone's life. So on Goodreads it says that the color purple depicts the life of African-American women in early 20th century rural Georgia. There's both domestic abuse and sexual abuse in this book and it's it's heartbreaking knowing that this is normal life for some people. So even though this book is set a hundred years from where we are now, it's heartbreaking to know that it, this is still going on, just in different ways. And I can definitely see why this book was so impactful when it first came out and why it's still going strong really <laughs> um, yeah it's definitely a book I think everyone should read but don't expect to be cheerful after it yeah but it feels important sad though that may be so this was a cheerful ending to this reading vlog. <laughs> well, sorry about that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this first reading vlog I've ever done. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, so please give me tips on how I should improve. Uh, because it's been quite fun, though it's been a lot of work. <laughs> Definitely feels like a lot more work than just a normal sit-down video. Yeah. <laughs>